Hello, welcome to Tundra Restaurant Supply. I'm Chris Tavano, and I'm going to be taking you through some knife care and maintenance today. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between honing and sharpening, and the different kinds of stones for sharpening, as well as the different kinds of steels and rods for honing. So, when you're honing, we've got to think about what's going on with the blade itself. When you have a nice sharp blade, it should look like this, nice and even on both sides. Notice there is a bevel. That is what we call these angles going to the tip. What happens as you use your knife and it wears down, that beveled tip starts to turn a little bit more blunt and starts to be a little bit more rectangular. Also what can happen is that tip will create burrs. So you tend to see a lot more metal fragments and inconsistencies or jagged edges on the knife edge itself. So what honing is going to do is remove those burrs and shape your blunt edge back into a nice beveled tip. However, the difference with sharpening now is when those burrs and jagged edges get too, too large as well as your blunt edge too big to where you can't cut through a tomato or a lemon or an onion, that's when you're actually going to want to sharpen your knife and grind it down to a whole new blade, creating a new beveled edge. So now we're going to get into the details of honing your knife and what honing rods are. Right here, we have a typical honing rod, which is a round shape. They come in many different shapes. Again, this one is another honing rod with an oval shape. There are also honing rods that are round, called with a helical cut, and what that means is the grit on the rod itself is in a spiral fashion to give it a much more abrasiveness. Also keep in mind, honing rods are made of different materials. This one, for instance, stainless steel. Much more abrasive than the knife, so that way it can, much more abrasive and harder than the knife, so that way it can actually shape the blade itself. This one, this oval one, is actually diamond plated. So anything that involves diamond is also going to do a little bit of sharpening, but you're not quite sharpening like as if you would with the stone itself. Again, these are again called honing rods. So their, multi their first purpose is honing your blade. Again, if you have a diamond in it, it does a little bit of sharpening, but don't count on it. So how to distinguish what kind of sharpness your blade has and does it need honing or sharpening? A great way is a tomato somewhat of ease. It gets a little caught up at the first beginning bite through the skin of the tomato. So this blade, if you think about it, is still fairly sharp. We could use a typical honing steel rod. Again, then if, then if your blade is slightly dull, you're going to want to, you could also use a diamond rod. So that way you can get a little bit of sharpness on and grinding onto your blade. Then if your blade is totally blunt and you couldn't even get through the skin of the tomato, you're going to want to sharpen your blade all the way. We're using a steel round honing rod and then you're going to want to think about an angle. On German knives, typically the angle of the bevel to the blade is about 20 to 22 degrees. And then on Japanese knives, the blades are a little bit thinner, but they're also a little bit stronger. But those angles go to about 12 to 15 degrees. Again, we're using a German blade, so we're just going to go for a rough 20 to 22 cut. Best way to do that is put your blade parallel with the rod itself, so that's 90 degrees. Then you can think 45, then bring it back to the half of the 45, so that's roughly 22 and a half. From there, you want to think about a nice consistent stroke. The stroke you want to take is from the top of the rod to the bottom of the rod, but simultaneously on the bias from the heel of your blade to the tip of the blade, all in one simultaneous motion. And then rotate on the next side. And keep rotating back and forth, left and right, until you've made a significant amount of passes, probably about 12. So that now that we have a nice reshaped blade from honing our knife, we can see that this will get through the tomato a little bit better. So keep in mind, if honing did not quite do the job you were looking for and you're still having difficulties cutting through your tomatoes and onions, you might want to think about starting to sharpen it with a sharpening stone. So last but not least are a little bit more of the handheld honing devices themselves. I tend to think these are a little bit more dangerous, but that's all up to you. Mostly this one that is handheld because you're actually putting the blade towards your fingers. This is a very nice one. It comes with two grits as well, a fine and a coarse. And again, same thing applies. You're going to want to put your blade in there, 
keep a nice firm pressure and make a consistent stroke all the way back. The nice thing about these ones is it has the angle predetermined for you. Um, they also make this version in electric as well, so that way you don't have to do much work yourself, especially if you need a lot of work done to your blade. But also keep in mind, these two devices were really made for honing. Unless they have a diamond steel within them, it does, like we mentioned earlier, it does do a little bit of sharpening. But again, these were designed for honing. The real sharpeners are out there are stones and grinders. Again, I'm Chris Tavano, and this is Tundra Restaurant Supply with Knife Honing and Maintenance.